Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you this morning? Welcome to Complex PTSD TV. My name's Linda. I'm your certified trauma recovery coach and we're streaming live from Brisbane, Australia. Say good day and let me know where you're from. Today we're going to have a quick chat about what love bombing is and the impact that it has on us with complex PTSD and certain signs that we need to be aware of so that we, in the future, we can recognize the love bombing, we can understand what's happening for us internally, and then we can begin to have healthy boundaries, we can begin to develop safe relationships, and most importantly, we can begin to say no to unsafe relationships, okay? Now, for those of us that are highly sensitive, empathic and have come from families where there's toxic families, dysfunctional families, abusive families, we all come out of that with a lack of awareness around genuine love, genuine connection genuine support and encouragement, plus how to manage all of these things. So we go on this steep learning curve, but when it comes to love bombing, because we have no idea what it is, it's like feels really good and sets off all the chemicals in our brain. We're like, oh, wow, this is great, you know. So love bombing is the most important step when a narcissist comes into our life and it sets up the platform for narcissistic abuse. So they must create in us a sense of devotion that we will endure the forthcoming devaluation stage. So when they start to strip everything from us, because once they know we're hooked, they know they can do whatever they want, say whatever they want, and we'll only blame ourselves. Now, we come out of our families blaming ourselves, okay? Because it's impossible as a child to believe that the person who's supposed to love me, and this is all non-verbal stage as well, it's impossible to believe that the person who's supposed to be taking care of me doesn't love me and there must be something wrong with me, okay? So when it comes to love bombing and a narcissist setting themselves up in our life, of course all the great stuff that seemingly is happening feels good. But the downside is, one, we don't know how to manage it at this stage, and two, we think that it's love because we've never had that experience before, all right? And in the early stages, they can do all these beautiful, loving things. You think, yeah, I'm, I'm, this is okay. This is right. This is on the right track. Okay. But what it does is break down our guard. It unlocks our heart and it modifies those brain chemicals so that all, the, all our pleasure centers are firing away. Okay. Now, all the excessive compliments and flattery and things they do play on our deepest vanities and insecurities, okay? So we don't know that at the time that it's happening. It's just like, wow, you know, I've been wanting to be loved all my life and here it is. Yay, this is good. And we don't know anything about love bombing and we don't know what to do, okay? And because in the beginning it all feels good and, you know, the feel good's going through our body, we don't question it. So they feed us constant praise and attention, whether it's via our phone, via Facebook, our timeline, our email, in person. But within a matter of weeks, the two of you will also have inside jokes, pet names, cute songs, uh, it's a whole list of things that connect you to each other and it's like it's the two of you together against the world, okay? Now, looking back, we go, that was insane. 
But when we're in the middle of it and our brain chemistry is firing on all cylinders, so to speak, we can't imagine life without them, okay? Now, I want to really emphasise that this is not our fault. This is something that we get set up for in childhood because we don't know or understand what real love is and what real safe relationships look like and how to develop those safe relationships, okay? So when someone comes along and things start moving too fast, we don't question it, okay? We go, oh, wow, this is great. You know, they must really know what they want, and they do. It's just that we're so naive, well, speaking personally, I was so naive that I believed that they had a foundation that I didn't have, okay? So think about if things move quickly, then we want to take a step back, all right? We want to really have a good look at what's happening for us. Now, the hard part is with complex trauma and love bombing is that it not only lights up all the pleasure centres, but we have a part of our brain that's like the love centre, which connects our prefrontal cortex and our limbic system together and when that love sign, that part of our brain lights up, everything does feel really good as well, all right? So we, when things feel good for us, it can be so, I hesitate to word, use the word alien, but internally it feels so good because we've not necessarily experienced that, that we overlook things that we shouldn't. So if something feels too personal too quickly, like they're asking questions around personal information, we need to have uh, the image in front of us of how far I'm prepared to let this person go in at what stage. And also remembering that it's only over time that we really see what somebody's truly like, okay? So minimum of three months before you even consider that that person could possibly be a good friend, right? You don't want to go into anything quickly. And if somebody labels you as being in a relationship after a couple of dates, just run. Just take it from me, run. There's billions of people in the world to have a relationship with. Just keep walking, okay? It's not healthy for your internal self or your internal systems, because absolutely we can get triggered from this as well, all right? Because we're not used to it, all of a sudden we're getting triggered internally and going into fight, flight, freeze or fawn, and we're like, why? And that's a really good indication that things aren't healthy for us as well. Uh, if they start acting needy or making demands, or like in my case, they moved in and didn't ask and all of a sudden I'm doing their washing and I'm like, what happened? But because I didn't have good boundaries, I didn't have good language, I wasn't able to express that this is just not going to happen. Okay? We need to go back home. So what we do is compensate for what's happening, which when you think about it, when we're children, we have to continually compensate for what's happening in the family home as well. So this is why us learning language around our emotions, us learning language around how to express what our boundaries are, are vital, even if we're in a relationship, they're vital to learn, okay? If communication contains demand, so if you're sitting down and you just want to have a conversation about, okay, let's talk about this is going wrong for me, and I'd like to see this happen, this is what I need. And all of a sudden it flips around and the other person's saying, well, you need to do this, you need to do that, and you need to change this. And, yep, that's not healthy, okay, because that's not an adult conversation at all. Adults have conversations where we sit and listen to each other and we're able to communicate effectively what's happening for us and as adults we can agree how to move forward. All right. Anyone starts making demands on you, you just, they need to get help as well. All right. If someone 
wants to rephrase what they said. So you know they've said one thing and they said, no, I said this. Then you want to really, really sit down and ask, has this happened repeatedly? So it's not just a one and done. Is this happening repeatedly? Because what happens over the longer term is because of the childhood abuse, we question ourselves, not them. So we've got to develop this internal confidence that, no, this is what's happened for me, this is what I understand, and we can't go changing it. We've got to sit and have a real conversation about what's happening. One of the things that I had to do in the end was have email, like written responses to everything because I kept getting um, gaslit. At the, in the end, it turns into being... Um, gaslighted in the relationship okay if the person doesn't take any accountability for their behavior so if you're like me we're really good at taking accountability for my behavior I'll own up to it I, I sincerely apologize I will do things to change my behavior and that's important but it's also important the other person does too that's about having a mature relationship but if the other person's not willing to change their behaviour, it's so, so important that we remember that there's nothing we can do to change anybody else. If they're not willing to change, then it's like a non-verbal, I'm sorry, but I don't want to participate in this relationship. And we are left with no choice then. Okay, If they're not participating, then we, we end up getting left with no choice. Okay. If somebody suddenly loves everything you love, yeah, that's that's real dodgy. Run the other way because you want somebody who's able to have their own thoughts, feelings, their own likes, dislikes, and you can still meet in the middle. You can still have adult friendships, adult relationships. You don't have to like everything that's the same, all right? Because if they like everything that's the same as you, you can guarantee that further down the track, when they're narcissistic, they turn it around and use it against you, okay? And if someone has an entirely different personality outside the house compared to behind closed doors, that's a really big sign that you're being love bond, okay? And you really have to sit down and have a conversation either with the trauma coach, a therapist, someone outside the situation so that you can be validated in what you're seeing in order that you can develop strategies for moving forward that align with your internal self, okay? So we have to be willing to move forward in a way that is congruent so everything inside of us lines up according to our values, our beliefs, our personality, our character where we see our lives going and be willing to say to the other person, this is what is right and healthy and whole for me. But watching that other personality behind closed doors, then we need to be aware that they are managing their behaviour as well. Okay? So when somebody can be really horrid behind closed doors and go out in public and they are the nicest person. Like people, people think they're absolutely the next best thing to slice bread, all right? Then we need to be aware they're managing their behaviour and they're choosing how they behave, all right? So when you're coming out of a narcissistic relationship it be, and you've gone down to the stage where you're devalued, you're questioning yourself, questioning everything, then we need to bring ourselves back to the stage where we understand that this person is choosing their behaviour and reinforce within ourselves that they are choosing their behaviour. And it can take some time to wrap our minds around just how cruel that is because we have such caring, sympathetic hearts that we go, wow, how can somebody actually choose to be one person behind closed doors and another person outside that, yeah, he did my head in, but we get there, okay? And then we want to look for whether their behaviour, 
their beliefs, their humour is consistent or not, right? Somebody who's consistent may seem boring to our internal system initially because we come out of family dynamics where chaos is prevalent and so that's our norm. So when somebody chaotic comes along, it feels normal. But we have to be willing to retrain our internal system that consistency is good. Chaos is not normal. Consistency is normal. Consistency internally for us is good. It's healthy. And through our recovery process, we learn how good consistency feels. And then we're able to go, no, I can see the chaos in that person's life and I, as an adult, choose not to go there. Okay, I hope all of that helps. Let me know down below if you have any questions at all because I'm always happy to answer questions because this, with complex PTSD, this is challenging. It can be heartbreaking when we understand this. It can cause grief for us because we've lost so many relationships not understanding so much of this. And it can also offer hope that as we do our recovery process, we're able to ask better questions. We're able to observe what happens and we're able to put in place boundaries that are healthy and effective and not only keep us safe but we actually grow into and develop safe relationships around us as well okay so don't give up don't give in we can do this and we do it together just one next step at a time have the most beautiful day and thank you everyone for commenting i will get back to you and yes the live video ends and it will be here on Facebook. It will be on YouTube permanently and you can absolutely get hold of it at any time. Like, subscribe, share, let the world know. Everyone with complex PTSD, we're normal. These are just things that we have to navigate in our adult life. Um, have a wonderful day and I will see you next week. Bye for now.